children's books are a good resource for developing language assessments. This is because in books, we see a richer variety of language. We see, for example, more abstract words, words like freedom, words like honesty. We also see more complex grammar being used in written language and books. Using children's books, of course, needs to be done in a systematic manner. It is best to use a wide range of children's books to source the material for language assessment. For example, it's better to try and get 50 sentences from about 30 books than to say, I'll take all 50 sentences from two books. Why is that a problem? It is a problem because within a book, you have one or two topic areas. So the vocabularies are linked to those topic areas and they repeat themselves. So you don't get enough variety. Language assessments, however, thrive on the variety of words and sentences that they have in the assessment scheme, because you want to be able to access the whole range of language knowledge that the child has. So books become an excellent source to get the variety that you want in your language assessment system. Another aspect of using storybooks and being systematic in the use of storybooks as a source for developing language tests is to make sure we source stories for different age bands. For example, in picture books and books for preschoolers, most of the vocabulary would be language that's early learnt. So these are words commonly known to very little children. These are words that are commonly used with little children. But as you go into primary school books, storybooks for children in the primary grades, you start seeing more ambitious words appearing. You start seeing words that are learnt later beginning to show. That really means that you're able to get easy words and more difficult words, common words, and rare words, high frequency words and low frequency words all together when you capture books from different age bands. This is good because in any language assessment you want your words to be graded. You want the test to have the easy to the not so easy to the difficult. That allows us to capture the differences of language levels of the children we assess. It may seem like a good idea to borrow a test from elsewhere, but this may not always work. There might be a lot that's lost in translation. New things might get added as one translates into a new language. It's important to therefore be alert to the fact that languages differ and a mere translation brings in aspects that one may not obviously be aware of. Let us take the word butterfly. If I was constructing a test in Bahasa, for example, butterfly would be Rama Rama. So that is an open syllable word and it has its own demands for getting children to segment it. If I was trying to develop a test in Filipino and I wanted butterfly and just translated it Again, it would be open syllabled word, paro paro. But if I was now doing this in Hindi or Urdu, the word would be titli. There is a close syllable within that word, tit. So the demand for that same butterfly as it travels from language to language is somewhat different when you want to segment it. What that also then means is that if you want to test that reflects the signature sound patterns of the language as a whole. The balance of open syllables, closed syllables, consonant clusters. You then want the test to be informed from within the language. 
you want the test to not be distracted by what has been offered up from a list that was developed to work for another language. So in short, a simple translation method does not work all the time. I have only given an example for phonology, but this applies for vocabulary, for grammar and for discourse. So thinking about the language that we are testing in is quite important as the starting point for developing a language assessment. So storybooks become a good starting point 